Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, if you recall from last time, we talked uh, a, a lot about how to count. And in particular, we started talking about the size. Uh, how, would you, how would you talk about the size of a set? When, what does it mean for two sets to have the same size? <coughs> and we agreed that uh, two sets have the same size if they can be what? If they Good, if they can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence, right? And so in fact, when we count, this is all we're doing. We're actually putting the numbers from one through eight into one-to-one -one correspondence with the people in the first row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? There are many ways that could be done, right? That could've, I could have also done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's another one-to-one -one correspondence, okay? But all we need is one or some one-to-one -one correspondence in order for me to say that the numbers one through eight has the same size as a set of people in the first row. With me? Okay, so once we had that notion, we said, ah, okay, that's what it means to count. So we could talk about the size of a set. I could say there are eight people in the first row because I've just put this set into one-to-one -one correspondence with the first eight numbers and this set in the, into uh, correspondence with the first um, four numbers, right? Okay. So then we began to ask, well, what about infinite sets? What about sets that, uh, that, are, that have more than a finite number of things in them, in some sense? So the natural numbers were an example. We proved that the natural numbers, in fact, were infinite, which wasn't necessarily obvious, right? Because there might secretly have been a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers and maybe the first eight numbers, perhaps, right? But we showed that if there were one for the first eight, there would have been one for the first seven. And if there were one for the first seven, there would have been one for the first six, et cetera. And uh, then basically that, uh, that would bring us back to the base case of an induction, right? The set of all natural numbers is not in one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of one element, right? That's what we did last time. Okay, good. Uh, so we began, uh, we decided to call any set that has the same cardinality, the same size as a set of natural numbers, we decided to call such sets what? Countable. And we showed, in fact, last time that the rationals are, in fact, countable. Very good. Um, so what I want to do today is I want to uh, say a little bit more about countability and uncountable sets, uncountability, uh, we, ha we ha need to define that. Uh, and I want to show you uh, a proof that, in fact, the, uh, the, the, a set and its power set must have different cardinalities. Okay, so we want to do that. And then in the second half of the course, we want to start, as of the lecture, we want to start talking about metric spaces. Okay? Okay, so that's the plan. So um, let me just remind us that, uh, we, uh, so here's the plan. We want to talk about countable sets. So uh, I'll just say what the plan is. So more about uh, uh, cardinalities. And then later on, we'll all talk about metric spaces. So uh, let's begin with a, uh, a theorem. Last time we showed that a um, set of all rational numbers is countable. There's something that, that that proof, if you recall how that proof went, we said, oh, well, we could certainly write down all the countable numbers, uh, all the rationals, as fractions in some kind of array. You remember that? And the array went this way and this way, right? And we said, okay, it's countable if the, the, ra the rationals can be listed in some order as a sequence. And of course, the problem is with the array that we, we had, which looked something like this, et cetera, we need to find a way to, to wind our way through this array and hit every fraction, right? Now, what would be wrong with just going down the first row? in my list. So x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, dot, 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 dot. Never get to the second row. Never get to the second row. 
Okay, so that would, all that would show is that the first row is countable. So what did we do instead with our argument? Of course, this is all, I'm doing this as a shadow, and so if you're watching this on video, you're not seeing anything. But how did we wind our way through this picture? We said, oh, here is a, okay, I'll do this for the benefit of people who can't see anything. So we had an array of numbers, and we said, ah, let's do what with this array? Let's wind our way through. We can certainly hit everything this way, right? Everybody agree? Et cetera. OK, okay so that was, the, that was the argument. This was the picture of the, the proof that the rationals are countable. But I claim it's, in fact, the picture for another proof. I mean, we just did something very general. So here's the theorem we want to prove. Uh, the theorem we'll prove is that the countable union of uh, countable sets is, in fact, countable. This is one of the big, the most important uh, facts about one of the, the best ways to show that a set is countable is to write it as the union of a bunch of, the countable union of a bunch of countable sets. Why is this, this picture really the, the same picture for this proof? Well, let's just uh, imagine that, um, so here's a proof. Uh, let's imagine uh, the sets that we are, are going to take the union of as uh, sets A1. Okay? So let's say, that each uh, of the A1, A2, A3 are countable sets. So would you agree, uh, the way I've written this, that this is a, the, a countable collection of sets? Why? I've indexed them by numbers, integers, na whole numbers, natural numbers. <laughs> one, two, three, dot, 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 right? Okay, and what I'm saying is that each one of these is a set that is itself countable. Okay, so if it's countable, it means it can be li listed in a sequence. Good. So consider we'll draw, we'll write out the the diagram like this. A one is a set of how about little a one one. Then maybe the next thing in the sequence I'll call little a one two. Little a13, little a14, little a15, dot, dot, dot. With me? Just one of you is with me. OK, great. Uh, and then a2, uh, let me give it some names, too. What would you like to call it? Not little a21, it's little a21, <laughs> little a22, little a23, et cetera. Okay? Dot, dot, dot. Now, uh, an A3, similarly. Little A31, little A32, little A33. OK, excellent. Here we go. Keep going. I'll let you do that. Now, um, can you suggest a way for me to show that everything in the union of these sets is going to be countable? Well, you could, you could do it how? By this kind of, uh, I would be careful about calling this, th this a diagonal argument because that, it, that, that name we reserve for something else. Uh, but let's zigzag. This is usually called the zigzag argument. Let's zigzag our way through this array, right? So the zigzag here again starts with this one. That's the first element. That's the second. That's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Etc., and you see it's exactly like the the argument we had uh, for the fractions. Okay, everybody happy with that? Happy with that? Well, I'm not so happy with this. Well, um, okay, so your, your objection, which is a reasonable objection, is what if one of the sets is, in fact, not countable but finite, right? Okay, and I didn't, 